What even is WordPress? I mean, nowadays you guys hear it everywhere, especially on YouTube. You type in, how do I make a website? And the first thing that you guys see is my beautiful face. Just kidding. Obviously the first thing that you guys see would be WordPress this, WordPress that. So what is it and how do you use it? Is it free? And if so, how do you get it? Let's talk about all of that right here and right now. WordPress is a widely used open source content management system or CMS that allows you to create and manage websites without extensive coding knowledge. It's initially developed for blogging, but it definitely evolved into an incredibly versatile versatile platform for various types of websites, including business sites, e-commerce, and portfolio sites. It's probably the most well-known way to build a website, especially because of its user-friendly interface and vast ecosystem of plugins and themes that you can download afterwards. WordPress enables its users to customize their websites easily. I would say that its popularity has definitely been driven by its flexibility and also how many plugins you can download. Not only is it easy to use, but WordPress also makes up a significant portion of the entire website. It's said that WordPress makes up around 42.7 7% of all websites that are on the internet today, which is pretty crazy. Not only is it popular with small companies, but lots of large corporations also utilize WordPress for their websites. The list is vast and really includes a lot of companies, but just to name off a few, you've got the New York Times, Forbes, CNN, eBay, and a ton of other companies as well. Overall, WordPress is a highly popular and influential CMS playing a crucial role in shaping the internet. Now that you guys have a basic understanding of what WordPress is, let's go ahead and talk about how you guys can get it because why why wouldn't you want to use the most popular free software that's out there for building websites? Depending on which hosting provider you guys go with, downloading and installing WordPress on your website can be a different process from platform to platform. And most of the time you just download WordPress through their hosting process while you're setting everything up. So that's why whenever you're watching a tutorial on how to build a website, I would personally just recommend downloading WordPress the same way that they do in that tutorial and from the same hosting provider. That way everything's just the same. You really can't go wrong with that. Now that being said, we here at Create a Pro website or a channel dedicated to showing you guys how to build professional websites at the cheapest price possible and as easy as possible. You guys can check out the channel on your own time, but we've got tons of tutorials showing you guys exactly how to build these websites. So if you guys decide to follow one of our tutorials, I'll show you guys in every tutorial how to download WordPress through the hosting provider that we always recommend, which we also think is the absolute best, and that's Hostinger. They're affordable, very dependable, and very easy to work with. Their interface and the background of your website is very intuitive, and their tech support is always ready to help you out. You guys can take a look at their pricing tables whenever you guys want and see what they include for what price, but I'm gonna show you guys really quickly how to get started if you wanted to install WordPress onto a website. Click on the first link in the description or go to createaprowebsite.com slash hostinger to get started. Below, you'll see a pricing table showing you three different plans that they have available and what those plans offer. I always recommend the business plan because of everything that it offers and includes for the affordable price that it is. After that, all you have to do is click on add to cart and then go ahead and finish up entering in all of your billing information and next you'll be taken to the setup screen, which is also where we're gonna be setting up WordPress and installing it onto your website. As you can see, just like I mentioned earlier in the video, you'll usually download WordPress through your hosting provider as you set up your site. Now, just a heads up, I can't speak about all of them, but most of the hosting providers out there are going to download WordPress for you automatically if you choose to do so. So it's very rare that you're going to try and install it on your own. This is why depending on which tutorial you guys decide to follow, I would just recommend following along and doing it with whatever hosting provider you think is best. After that, you just click on edit your website and you'll be taken to your WordPress dashboard. So this is your WordPress dashboard. Similar to pretty much every other software out there that you use for trying to build a website, you've got the menu over here on the left-hand side where you can make different changes and go to different sections of your dashboard. Up on top, you have the admin bar where you guys can view your website, manage comments, add new objects to your website, and you can also view your account. And then on the right-hand side of your screen, which takes up most of the screen, is just where you'll be able to make any selections or changes that you need when it comes to specific parts of your WordPress website. First, we have the dashboard, which is the first thing that you're always gonna see whenever you enter the back end of your website. This is where you can have different widgets give you specific information about your website, sort of like an instrument cluster in the dash of your car. Each one of these tiles can give you information on specific metrics on your website. You could have Google Analytics, recent comments, and any other plugin that you might think of that could be displayed promptly right here in front of you so that you can get a quick snapshot of everything that you're doing right there. Right underneath the dashboard, you have the updates tab. This is where you can manually make updates to your website as new versions come out. You can update WordPress, the plugins that are installed on your website, and also all of the themes. After that, we have the posts tab. This is where you can manage all of the blog posts that are on your website. Here you can easily add a new post, title it, and then start writing it instantly and publish it to your website. You can also delete blog posts here as well. 
Then you can make changes to any categories that you might want to set up for your blog posts, as well as tags to help with the optimization and SEO for your posts. Next is the media tab. This is where you can upload all of your media onto your website. This can literally be anything. You can upload videos, you can upload photos and documents and so much more so that everything is just accessible in one place on your website. Next, you have the pages tab, which displays all of the pages that you have on your website. Here you can add, edit, or delete pages as you guys see fit. Next, we have the comments tab where you can moderate the comments that enter onto your website via blog posts or product ratings or whatever you might have. This is a pretty important section of your website because moderating comments is a very important thing that you need to make sure you're always staying on top of so that everything can stay cordial and professional on your website. After the four self-explanatory sections that we just covered, we now have the appearance section. This is where you can make changes to the appearance of your website if it wasn't already obvious. The biggest part of the appearance tab is installing a WordPress theme for your website. WordPress themes can help you edit your website in many different ways. Now, some of these themes have their own page built built in, while others require you to download a third-party page builder plugin in addition to the theme to be able to edit your pages, because the theme is usually going to edit your header, footer, and also your blog posts. Next you have the plugins tab, which is where you can download and install plugins onto your website to add functionality to it. After that, you have the users tab, which is where you can add, edit, or delete users from your website. If you have a team of developers working on a website, each one of them are going to have their own user profile, and you guys can moderate the roles for each user. They can either be an administrator, an editor, an author, a contributor, or a subscriber. Finally, we have the tools and settings tab. It's not very often you're going to mess around in the tools tab unless you download a specific plugin that goes into the tools tab on your WordPress dashboard. So usually you're just going to skip over this one. Under the settings tab, you've got the general tab, which is where you can make general changes to the entirety of your website. You can make changes to your site title and your site tagline, as well as mess around with the language, time zone, and other things like your site URL. Under the writing tab, you can make changes to your email server. Under the reading tab, you can select which page is the home page of your website, as well as simple settings like how many blog pages are going to show and things like that. The discussion settings have everything to do with your blog posts and comments. This is where you can moderate how people are going to fill out the comments on your website, as well as how people will email you and things like that. Under the media settings, you're just going to choose the different sizes for your images. Now, permalinks are really important because this is where you're going to change the structure of the permalinks for your entire website. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. Finally, you have your privacy settings. Now, you're probably wondering why I skipped over a bunch of different tabs on the WordPress dashboard, and that's because I was trying to go over all of the basic WordPress sections. You'll notice that if I go to the plugins tab, each one of the plugins that are installed on my website have their own tab that will automatically appear on the menu on the left-hand side of your WordPress dashboard. This tutorial would obviously be way too long if I tried to explain every single plugin in existence and how their dashboard looks on WordPress. So instead, we're just going to be sticking to the default WordPress functions. So for those of you who are completely new to WordPress, that's a basic overview for your WordPress dashboard and where everything is. Obviously, learning how to build a website is a little bit more than just learning where everything is on WordPress, but I hope I gave you guys a better understanding of what WordPress is and how to use it. All right, now that you guys know what it is, let's talk about some of the best practices or tips and tricks when it comes to using WordPress to build a website. I've been building websites for well over five years now, and I've learned a couple things along the way. This is going to be just a short list of a couple things that I think beginners should know or keep in mind when they're working with WordPress to make life a little bit easier. One of the most important parts of your WordPress dashboard is the home page. Every time you log into your website, it's the first thing that you're greeted with. I've got videos that show you guys how to build custom WordPress dashboards with specific buttons that take you to different parts of your website. I'll go ahead and put a title card up right now so you guys can click on that link if you want to go check out that video. Now, if you don't want to opt in for a completely customized dashboard look, you can always just use the default integration that comes with each plugin that you download on your website. If you're using Google Analytics, which you definitely should be, you can have your Google Analytics displayed promptly on your WordPress dashboard as well as any other information from any other plugins that you have. So my first tip that I think beginners should know how to do is clean up your WordPress dashboard and how to choose what is displayed here. When you're looking at your WordPress dashboard, the first thing that you should do is toggle up all of these different tiles by clicking on the little carrot icons like this. You can also dismiss the welcome to WordPress message like this. Now your WordPress dashboard looks a lot more clean and less cluttered. You can also drag and drop each one of these tiles into different positions on your WordPress dashboard if you want them to be in different positions or to just evenly distribute them. Finally, you can click on the screen options right here at the top corner of your screen, and then you can use the checkboxes to decide what's actually displayed on your WordPress dashboard, so you can add or remove different tiles like this. Now, I'm going to leave customizing your WordPress dashboard to you because you're the only one who can decide what you need to see prominently on your website the first time you come in, but that's just my first tip. My second tip would be paying attention to the time zone settings in your WordPress dashboard. If you're a blogger, you already know it's really important to schedule out your blog posts and have them automatically ready to go so 
that you can continue to write more content and get farther ahead and have a bunch of backup posts ready to go. Something that can make things a little difficult in your scheduling is if your time zone settings are off. From your WordPress dashboard, just click on the settings tab and go to the general settings tab. From here, about halfway down, you'll see the time zone settings. When you click on it, you're gonna see a whole bunch of UTC all over the place. Don't worry about all of that. If you scroll all the way up, you will see that there are different countries that you guys can select. I hope this helps you guys pick the correct time zone so that now all of your posts will be published on time. Now, while we're here, we can also double check the site title and tagline to make sure that you have them optimized correctly so that you can display your site title prominently and also for SEO optimization purposes. If you're working on a website and you have a pretty large team with people that live in different countries all working on the same website, this is pretty important to know. You need to know how to change your site language so that everyone can understand what's going on in the back end of your website. Rather than going to the general settings tab right here and changing your site language, I'm gonna show you guys a different place to do it. Changing your site language in the general settings will change the language settings for every user that works on the website. Instead, go over to the users tab and edit your account individually. From here, you can change the language from site default, which is the main language for the entire website, and you can choose to have a different language displayed only for you on your own profile. That way, everyone can read what they need on the website in their own language. Obviously, this is only for people with larger websites with a larger team of people working on them rather than smaller websites, but I hope it helps you all of the same. Now, let's talk about my fourth tip, which is how to update your website. In terms of best practices for WordPress, this is pretty much a necessity. After working on websites for a really long time, I've noticed that WordPress, as well as other plugins out there, aren't that good at staying updated automatically on their own. This means that you're gonna have to check your updates tab constantly to make sure that you have all of your software up to date. I've stepped away from websites for long periods of time before, and every time I come back, there's always a ton of updates that need to be done on my website. Most of the time when your site crashes, come over here to the updates tab and check it out. Most of the time, the reason your site is down is because something is out of date and causing everything else to act a little wonky. That's actually one of my first troubleshooting tips that I use for beginners of web design. And it's really easy to update everything on your website. You can do it actually within a minute or two. All you gotta do is go to your updates tab from your WordPress dashboard, and then you'll be able to see all of the different plugins, themes, and WordPress versions that you need to have updated. All you gotta do is just select them all and then click on update and WordPress will take care of the rest. The last tip or best practice for using WordPress for beginners that I have for you guys today would be adjusting your permalinks on your website. Most of the time when you create a new website inside of WordPress, your URL will look something like this. The way that you can change your permalinks is by going to the settings tab in your WordPress dashboard and then clicking on the permalinks tab. From here, you can choose your permalink structure. Now, I always recommend selecting post name. After you're done, click on save changes and now you can open up your website and go to different pages on your site and you'll notice that the URL is a lot more intuitive and easy to read. If you're a beginner to building websites and you're thinking about building a website for your business, I would recommend checking out this video right here where I talk about the five reasons why you need a website in 2024. Spoiler alert, it's incredibly important to have a website in 2024. So these are five of the most important reasons why it's an absolute necessity to have a website. You won't wanna miss these five reasons, so I'll see you guys in the next video.